This video is all about the finale of The Lost Minds of Fandelver. We're focusing on the Wave Echo Cave today, but this dungeon, it's so big, man, I cannot fit it all in my brain at once, so we're splitting this video into two parts. The first half is all about the big picture stuff, the story beats that you wanna hit during your stories, climax, how you wanna tie up all these loose ends. In the next video, we're gonna do the nitty gritty room by room stuff, encounter by encounter stuff. But first, here's a confession. I have been unclear about some things in these previous guides. Just lack of foresight on my part, because because I see the same questions popping up over and over in the comments. So let's you and I clear up some things right now. Just quickly, we are having a competition at the moment where you could win a copy of Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. There's a link up here to all the details. Part one, questions before the way of Echo Cave. How does all of this advice connect to the next adventure, the Dragon of Ice Spire Keep? The answer is I don't know. See, I Spy Keep, it's meant to be a kind of sequel to The Lost Minds of Fandelver, but I haven't read that adventure, so I don't know how all of this is gonna be compatible with that, but I'm sure you can work it out. What level should the party be? So your party, they're gonna start at level one, right? Numero uno. And then they're gonna hit level two after the Cragmore hideout or during the Cragmore hideout. Ideally, they're gonna level up after the Red Brand hideout and then again after the Cragmore castle. But if they skip any of that content, then you should just find dramatic moments to level them up anyway. This is all milestone leveling. And then they should be level four when they start the Wave Echo Cave. And if they want, they can hit level five during or after the dungeon. That's up to you. What's the purpose of the mysterious puzzle box? I've seen some general anxiety surrounding the mysterious puzzle box and the way it fits into this fictional world. So let me clear this up. The only purpose of the puzzle box is to act as a MacGuffin. The only reason it's in the story is to give you, the dungeon master, a reason to introduce the black spider early in the campaign and establish a kind of relationship with the party, any kind of relationship. Otherwise, your final climactic encounter will just be two groups of strangers who have never met uh, just smashing each other, punching each other in the car park. What if the party recognized the black spider from the prologue? If you recall, at the very start of this series, I suggested you write a little prologue scene where the black spider is foiled in her attempt to get the mysterious puzzle box. And some commenters are worried that the players might realize that the black spider's accent from the prologue, they'll realize it's the same character when you introduce the black spider later. And I think that's totally fine. You see, the players need to know that she's the villain eventually, right? And even if the players think that she's sus from the get-go, they go, ooh, this accent connects to this accent. Well, there's a fun trope of working together with the bad guy in stories and movies, like just briefly, one episode where they team up. I love it. And besides, the juice isn't the reveal that the black spider is evil. The juice is the intrinsic value that you get from the players actually knowing and hating the black spider and the black spider knowing and hating the players. I think that relationship is a prerequisite for having a fantastic finale. So let's make a little checklist of how well you've done on checking off everything that you need to do before doing this finale. So give yourself a point for everything you can answer yes to from this list. Has the party met the black spider? Does the party know the black spider's evil plan? Is there animosity between the black spider and the party? Has the party either resolved or meaningfully interacted with Gundren's storyline? Does the party know the location of the Wave Echo Cave? Does the party know what the Forge of Spells even is? Does the party know about the Forge of Spells Guardian? Does the party know the purpose of the mysterious puzzle box? Actually, let's talk about those last two in a little bit more detail. Part two, the mysterious puzzle box and the Forge's Guardian. At the start of my Lost Minds campaign, I gave my players a physical box that they could hold and touch and taste, but the characters would need to make an intelligence check during a long rest to open this bad boy. What's in here at the moment? What's in here? Oh my God, all my erasers are, it's full of erasers. I've been looking for these. So when my players opened it, they didn't find erasers, they found a key. And that key, while well, the black spider, they needed it. She hounded the players to try and get that key off them because she needed it to bypass the guardian of the Forge of Spells. That's the point of the item inside the mysterious puzzle box, to bypass the guardian of the Forge of Spells. But what is the guardian? Well, the guardian is just a challenge that can be bypassed by the item inside the mysterious puzzle box. Now I know that's begging the question a bit. We're going around in circles, but the point is that the item inside the box and the Guardian are thematically connected, totally based on what you want for your game. That Guardian it could be any kind of challenge that impedes somebody accessing the Forge of Spells. In my game, the key inside, it fit a magical lock that inhibited the Forge of Spells and bound a creature to protect it. Somebody on our Discord server, please come join our Discord server by the way, link downstairs, they had a jade leaf in their puzzle box and this was meant to be a missing piece of an old puzzle on the forge's door and the players would have to put it in the right place to open. 
In that case, the Guardian is a puzzle and the item in the mysterious puzzle box is a puzzle piece, very linked. Or the Guardian could be a creature and the item could destroy or distract or appease that creature in some way. But what creature should be your Guardian? Well, the Monsters Manual is already a great rogues gallery of scary, scary monsters. So you could just pick any monster that you think is thematically cool. I would recommend a Flail Snail because they're rad and scary, though maybe a little bit tough. In fact, up here is the story of how I killed my party with a flail snail, Oosh. But of the monsters already written in the module, well, there's Mormesk the Wraith, and maybe the puzzle box holds one of his bones that could be used to put him to rest. Or maybe the Guardian is a spectator, and the box could contain the symbol of its old master, and the spectator would respect it. It, it would respect it. <laughs> A spectator, by the way, is like a weaker, more manageable beholder. In fact, I've got one right here. Everybody, this is Raw, the engagement beholder. Now he lives off all your YouTube subscriptions and likes and comments, don't you, buddy? Oh, what's that? Oh, you're starving? Oh, I'm sorry, mate. I'm just one person. I don't know if I can get you all that engagement all by myself. That's why the black spider wants this box. Now there are two possible outcomes here. Outcome one is she gets the box. Outcome two is she doesn't get the box. And both are fine, it doesn't matter. You see, the black spider knows what the guardian is and she knows why the item is needed to bypass that guardian. And if she manages to get the mysterious puzzle box off the party, then they're gonna stumble on her at the exact climactic moment when she achieves her goal of activating the Forge of Spells. But what if Nezar doesn't manage to get the puzzle box off the party? Well then she's gonna need to get creative. She has two options in that case. The simple option, and the one that I usually do, is that she could stalk the party and attack them at the moment that they discover the Forge of Spells. But if that's not appropriate for some reason, then she could try to deal with the Forge's Guardian without the mysterious puzzle box. However, this does mean that you need to think of some kind of backdoor solution to this Guardian problem. And this solution should be something that puts the Black Spider at a disadvantage. It doesn't exactly work out for her. And when you're dreaming up your alternative solution, I want you to think of Indiana Jones. Because the villains in those movies, the I shouldn't say that word out loud because YouTube's gonna suppress this video now. Hey, please share this video with everybody you've ever met to counteract the fact that I'm about to get suppressed. So the N-A-Z-I's always get defeated by their own hubris. They activate the arc, they get blasted. They drink from the wrong cup and they melt. So if she tries to cheat the Guardian challenge, then let the Black Spider's hubris punish her before your final fight. It's a very fun story beat. Part three, how to streamline the way of Echo K. I said in the beginning that we're breaking this video into two parts because I can't fit a mega dungeon in my brain all at once. So for now, let's cover how to tell this story in an abstract way without a dungeon map. And then next video, we'll break down everything room by room and counter by counter, just in case you want to run it like a more traditional dungeon. In an abstract sense, this session is going to be five or so scenes. We know that our first scene is definitely going to be about entering the Wave Echo Cave. Now I bet that your last session ended with the party rescuing Gundren or finding him dead. So through role-playing Gundren, you need to create some urgency. You need to get the players to the Wave Echo Cave. Here, they're gonna find Gundren's other dead brother. And this is a great opportunity to get Gundren to leave the party. If you don't wanna to have to babysit Gundren through this whole dungeon, then you can have him take his brother's body back to Phandalin in grief. It's actually quite sad and I'm being pretty insensitive about it. Sorry, Gundren. Another certainty is that the final scene is gonna be the showdown with the Black Spider. Ideally, this encounter happens somewhere near the Forge of Spells so our dramatic climax can intersect with the Guardian that you've devised. I run this combat as the Black Spider and then as many giant spiders to make the numbers even on each side. So five players over here, five combatants over here. If the party is getting wrecked and they're in a really bad way, then just subtract a spider. Whatever happens in this final scene, get personal with your portrayal of the Black Spider. Remember your accent, remember the player's names. You gotta work off that shared history that we've already worked so hard to establish with the players. And also, we've got this custom stat block with legendary actions for the Black Spider that we made for her over on Patreon, up here. And my friendly Dungeon Master, do not be friendly about this fight. Play to win. If a player character dies in this final fight, that's fine, I'm at peace with that. What's the first scene and the last scene taken care of, but what about everything in between? Well, there's this constant booming wave sound throughout the dungeon originating from the Forge of Spells. So the players should be following that sound, right? And this is gonna come off as super flippant, and I'm sorry about that, but just pick three encounters that interest you from the dungeon as written and move them in front of the players. Which three encounters do you think are the best ones from this dungeon? Let me know downstairs, and bonus points if you can turn any of these encounters into special player moments. I'll share mine in the pinned comment. Oh, and here's a contingency. If any of the players decide to ignore the Wave Echo Cave plotline for some 
awful reason, then just make sure they know. If the black spider gets into the Forge of Spells, then Phandalin is absolutely boned. But still, if they still ignore the Wave Echo Cave, even at that point, then just have the black spider, super powered, come attack town, go get him. You can mess him up. <laughs> Part four. Writing an epilogue for the lost minds of Fandelver. I always wrap my campaigns up with an epilogue. Just a little moment to give every character their swan songs before we retire the party. I do this in an abstract way, like stretching over weeks or months or years in game, so everybody can achieve their goals for their characters. So immediately after the Forge of Spells, after they secure it and they defeat the Black Spider, I want you to spitball with your players just like you did in Session Zero. And the goal is to establish what does each player want to do with their character? What happens with the Forge of Spells after the campaign? What about any outstanding plot lines? What about any outstanding NPCs? Don't roll for skill checks on anything here, just let it happen and say yes to all of the players' ideas. My most recent party defeated the Black Spider and then they cast a revivify on her body and her soul was bound to the Forge of Spells. She was doomed to protect the Forge of Spells from opportunistic adventures like herself. Tragic. The party druid paid off her family debts. The party barbarian opened up an orphanage for lost animals. And the warlock and wizard ran off to do a bunch of magical stuff. And my favorite part about doing an epilogue in this way is that it's so little effort. Because at the end of a session, man, I'm brain dead. I couldn't manage any grand theatrical role playing. So this, very easy. Did you know we have a Discord? There's a link downstairs and I'd love to see you sign up. And all these people here, these are my patrons. I really like these people. They're so helpful. Thank you so much for supporting the channel and thank you for watching. I'll see you all later.